People who know me know I don't do long intros, so just hang in there. I'm not going to talk for long. Um, part of the problem with me shooting these is I'm solo. I don't have a camera crew. So i got to set up my cameras and just hope things go for the best, and I have no way of knowing if any of them shut down on me while I'm filming. Uh, I had a couple of cameras run out on batteries, um, so a lot of the footage that I thought I was getting, I didn't get. But I still put together something that I think is going to be pretty unique um, as far as uh, what I've seen on YouTube. I uh, haven't seen anybody else do this. So yes, I cover myself in mud on thermal. Um, when I noticed that a couple of cameras went down later, I bring them back up and shoot some more footage. So stick around for the whole thing. You'll see mud on a person on a 80 sensor, 384 sensor, and 640 sensor thermal unit. Just hang in there. Probably the single most common request I get is for mud and the predator. So let's do it. Mud. Now I'm reviewing the old predator movie. He did not have a lot of mud on him. That was one thing. Uh, gotta remember in the movie he crawled out of the river and the predator came in right behind him and right behind him he didn't have much time he crawled up onto the riverbank crawled into that big old pile of roots under the tree and he was just covered with mud from what was on him from hitting the river so he did not have a whole bunch of mud on him this is actually a lot thicker than what he had on him. So I'm recording this on an 80 sensor thermal, a 384 sensor thermal, and a 640 sensor thermal. Oh, this is fun. Okay, I think I'm Arnold. I have no idea what this looks like on camera. I won't find out until in post. But there we go. Full mud, predator style. So there we go. I think I got everything covered. My head, my face, my neck, my arms, shirt, everything just like in the movie. How's it look? So, like I said, I'm recording this on three different sensors. The smallest sensor unit, the 80 sensor, is actually what the 1980s movie Predator was filmed on. They use an 80 sensor thermal when they filmed that movie. So you'll be able to see on that one, uh, the 80 sensor, what it looks like in real life. Um, the 384 sensor thermal, um, I'm not sure existed at that time. I know the 640 did not. Um, the 384 was kind of the heyday in the, uh, the 90s and the 640 has come out since then, uh, 2000s. Um, so these are more higher end units than what they had back then. Um, now, when you're facing off against a potential adversary, um, one of the things that uh, you need to keep in mind is the 80 sensor thermal is not the most common out there nowadays. Um, now, people who are on a budget, um, they go for the 80 and you know 100 class sensors. Um, so there are quite a few of those out there. It's just, they're gonna be ordinary average everyday people who are probably busy at home trying to defend their property and homes and or freaked out. Um, if you've got somebody actively hunting you, they're probably doing it with a 384 or 640 sensor thermal unit. Um, that's really where your threat matrix is gonna be. Those uh, average everyday folks, preppers, that kind of stuff, they're just running low unit sensors trying to defend their home and property and family from anything that may happen. Um, 
the big baddies, the, the hunter-killer groups, the people who um, their plan of survival is to go out and hunt down other people that have supplies. They're the ones that are going to have the Gen 3 night vision, the 640 sensor thermals. That's where they're putting their money into because that's how they plan to come after you. So really when you're looking at these things, what you need to think about is how is that 640 sensor and how is that 384 sensor looking? Because that's what people are going to be using to come after you. That's what they're going to be looking for. Oh. Very curious how this looks. <laughs> I think I've been here for a couple minutes now. Uh, my plan is just to kind of sit here for about five minutes and that way you can get a see for how the effect of the mud works. Um, I guess I can go full Arnold here and oh, do like he did in the movie, right? Oh yeah, get my arm under some roots here. Yeah, all right. I think this is what he did in the movie, right? You look like this. So what do you think? Can you see me? This is what he looked like. I wonder how this looks. I'm actually quite curious. Uh, for the record, it is cold out here. Obviously, snow. Uh, ambient temperature right now is about 52 degrees. So it gives you an idea. The mud temperature is pretty cold, um, but you know if you think about it, on the riverbank, it's probably not going to be that different because this is wet mud. <laughs> I'll just kind of hang out here for a few minutes. Guess I can close my eyes and see how it looks. What do you think? Could you see me? Like I said, this is one of the single most requested video concepts. And I put it off for as long as I could because I didn't want to be covered in mud. But it's like everybody's go-to. Anytime I put up a video, one of the first comments <laughs> always seems to be something about the Predator. Just used mud. So I figure, you know what? Let's just use mud. That's warm. Still covered in mud.
Fox the Predator. This is mud. How'd it do on thermal? What do you think? This is with a refresher. That flight's some additional. How's it look? And behind me? <laughs> so, unfortunately, looks like the little thermal didn't get a whole lot of footage. Uh, the sun was too bright and the uh, mid-grade thermal ran out of batteries such as typical with uh, rechargeables but uh I'm still covered in mud <laughs> smaller units so that we could get at least some footage of that on the smaller thermals. I felt it was important, especially since the little guy is what Predator was filmed with. So hopefully that uh, gave people what they were looking for. And we are probably 20 minutes out now, roughly, since putting it on. Maybe 17. I don't know. All right, right there. There you go. Thanks for watching. Postscript. It was every bit as much fun as you can imagine getting the dried clay out of my facial hair and hair. Oh yeah, it does not like to give up without a fight. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. So, here we are at about 10, maybe 15 minutes out. You see the mud is starting to dry. I'm not sure how much the wet mud is still blocking signatures, if it ever blocks signatures. Oh, sorry, I don't know. I won't know until in post how this did. Very curious how it works on the head, so this is usually one of the hottest spots. So, I don't know. Guess we'll see. But the big question is what you expect it to do. That's why I'm out here. So I'm doing this. There's so many people ask me, make mud, <laughs> put it on, be like Arnold, do the thermal. So here we are. Hopefully, I answer some questions.